As I was going through the Unit 2 exam, I noticed that there were a couple of problems that weren't necessarily addressed in the study guides that I wanted to make sure you were prepared for. The first of them was at having you take a decimal and turn it into a fraction. So this is a pretty simple task. All you do is take the fraction or the decimal and place it over its place value. So 42 is in the hundredths location, so we place it over 100. Now, if the directions ask you to simplify, you would then need to go ahead and reduce this. If you weren't sure what the prime factors are, or the factors of it are, you know that they're at least both even, and you can reduce from there. So half of 4 is 2, half of 2 is 1, half of 100 is 50, and when we look at that, 21 fiftieths doesn't have any other common factors, so this is fine where it's at. But again, you don't have to reduce unless the directions ask you to simplify, though generally it's not a bad thing to just err on the side of caution. I wouldn't mark it wrong if you did reduce it and take it that extra level. The other thing is taking a fraction and rounding it to its nearest various place values. So if we have three sevenths, we need to start by finding out what this is as a decimal and then rounding appropriately from there. If I have three, how many times can I take seven from it? I can't, so that means I put a decimal and add a zero. How many times can I divide seven out of 30? I can take it out four times, which means I'm taking out 28, leaving me with two, bring down the zero. Seven out of 20 is going to be twice which has me taking out 14, with six as a remainder, bringing down the six. Four into 60 is going to be eight times for 56, and 40, another zero, bring down the 40. Seven into 40 is going to be five times for 35. Now I see that it only asks me to go to the nearest thousands place, so I needed, which is three decimals, so I just needed to go to four decimals to be able to round appropriately. I can go ahead and be done here. So now I have 4,286 10, or 85 thousandths. You don't have to really know how to be able to say that. Okay, to the near, rounding this value to the nearest once, is four tenths closer to zero, or is it closer to one? Well, since that is less than five, it is closer to a zero. Now we need to round to the nearest tenths. So the four is in the tenths position, and we look to the smaller place value, the hundredths, to decide what to do. If this two, if the number after the place value we're rounding is four or less, the place value we're looking at stays the same. If it is five or more, we round our place value up. Another way to think about it is this as 42. Is 42 closer to 40 or 50? It's closer to 40, so we get to keep the four the same. And then just dump everything after the place value we were rounding because it wasn't interested in it anymore. Now we have hundredths. So if we look at the hundredths, it's the two, we have to look at the eight to decide whether we keep that a two or round it up. Well, if I think of it as 28, 28 is, is that closer to 20 or 30? What's well, closer to 30? So I keep the point four, the decimal four, and then I make the two be a three. You wanna make sure that you don't dump any of the earlier values, you just round and then dump later values. Round it to the nearest, Thousands is the eight, so I'm looking at the five. The five tells me to round the eight up because 85 is closer to 90. So I keep the decimal 42 the same, and I turn the eight into a nine. On the test, you're going to also be asked to kind of replicate the base 10 diagrams the best that you can in a digital format. So we're going to be using braces, the downward slash and a period to represent wholes, tenths, and hundreds. On your keyboard, near your backspace key, is a key that has the braces and a bracket on it, and next to it is the bracket headed, bracket and braces headed the other direction. So you'll want these two keys. 
To do the slash for the tens, you're going to want to look for the key that has the, the slash down and then the backslash. You'll hit shift when touching this key to be able to get the top feature on that key to be able to represent the tenths. And then the hundreds are just a period. So if you are trying to, if you're being asked to represent two and 74 hundredths, that means you have two whole. So you'll use your brackets. No spaces are necessary. And then seven tenths. So you need seven bars. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And four periods to represent the four hundredths. And this is what your answer would look like. Now you're also going to be asked to add using this base 10. So say we have two and 74 hundredths plus one and um, 17 hundredths. So representing this, we would also represent this slash and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, then to represent the answer, we would combine any common values like we were adding. Well, I know it takes 10 hundredths to make one 10. I have seven here and three here. So if I group these and take these out, I can combine them to turn in to a tenth. Then I have another tenth here, and then I had seven here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, for a total of nine tenths. And then I had three whole. So the solution to this, oh, and I forgot I had one more dot for the hundredths. So I have three and 91 hundredths. We can confirm that using just regular addition principles where we line our decimals up. Seven plus four is 11. Put the one from the ones, the, ten, the one tens over there. Now we have nine tenths and three ones, which is what we showed in this base 10 calculation. The last couple of questions have to do with scientific notation and negative exponents. You'll be asked if two to the fourth, it won't be these same numbers, but two to the fourth plus two to the negative fourth, does that equal zero? Now, the answer to that is, well, let's evaluate it to prove it, to, to, to figure it out. So two to the fourth means two times two times two times two. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 4 is going to be 16. So we know what the evaluated 2 to the 4th power is. Then, if I have 2 to the negative 4, that does not mean I have a negative 16. A negative exponent is not creating a negative number, it's creating a reciprocal. So, to get the negative off of the 4, we then flip our base. And by doing that, instead of having 2 as a whole number, we now have 2 as a fraction of a whole number. The negative can then clear off of the 4. Well, we already found out what 2 to the 4th is. It's 16. So, instead of 2 to the 4th, I have 1 16th. Well, if I have 16 and I add a 16th to it, I don't get 0. I get 16 sixteenths. So the exponents do not cancel each other out when you're just multiplying the bases. You're just adding values together, which are always going to get bigger. The last thing to look at is ordering these scientific notations from smallest to greatest. So to start with, we always want to look at the degree on our 10. Negatives are always going to be worth less than positives. So I have a negative on the 5.3 and a negative on the 7.4. Then I look at the leading numbers then. Which one's larger? Or in this case, since we're looking to start with the smallest number, which one's smaller, a 5 or a 7? A 5 is. So 5 and 3 tenths times 10 to the negative 4 is our smallest. And then 7.3 
times 10 to the negative fourth is our second smallest. Then we look at our next degree up from there. It's going to be the positive 4, and I have two of those. So then I look at my leading value. Which one is smaller, 5 or 9? Five? 5's going to be. So we have a 5 and 3 tenths times 10 to the 4th. 9 and 12 hundredths times 10 to the 4th. And our final value is the 10 to the 7th power because this is asking you to move the decimal place over more places, making the 7 worth more. And 7 and 3 tenths times 10 to the 7th would then be our largest value. And you should be ready for the test.